Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Summit 2018. Uh, joined here by Steve Shah. Hi Steve, thanks for joining us. Nick, how's it going? Fantastic, thank you. So, what's your role here at Citrix? What do you do for? So, I'm the Vice President of Product Management for the Citrix networking business. So, uh, all the Netscaler ADC, the Gateway, all of that stuff, if it has a Netscaler badge on it, it's my fault. <laughs> Wonderful. So tell us, um, we obviously um, finished the keynote speeches, made some announcements. Tell us a little bit around uh, Netscaler Technologies. What does Netscaler do for customers? And also, what can you share around some of the announcements we made this week? Oh, wow. We've been doing a lot of things, so it's been an exciting year. We, we came pumped for, for 2018. The big things that we were really talking about are, of course, the secure digital perimeter. That was the real big announcement that David Henshaw shared at the keynote. And with the secure digital perimeter, this is what is really going and enabling the workspaces to get connected all the way across the board from end users coming into the application, as well as thinking about more of a B2C case where you're thinking about how do I protect the application from the end user. Because of all of that capability, we have a, a rich set of new things that we're looking at that are all geared for the cloud. So that's been the highlight of what we've been talking about for this week. Uh, the second big thing that we've been talking about is the multi-hybrid cloud. This is really a transformative piece where we're watching the ADC market go from just thinking about hardware to actually driving more around software. And the, the motivating factor for that is, as people want to take applications and move them up into the cloud, by having it as software, they get the malleable form factor for being able to move it to any cloud they want to pick. So whether it's Azure, it's AWS, Google Cloud Provider, whatever it is, they've got that support. And that latter part there is, is actually really special because no one else does something like this. In fact, Gartner was saying that we are the only vendor that satisfies all use cases worldwide. And so they recommended us as really just the, the best ADC there is out there. Okay, well, so the Gartner recommended us for four key areas, if I remember rightly from there. What, what specific four should partners think about when they're engaging with their customers around moving from on-premises deployment, where mm -hmm. a customer says, I want to go to cloud, and partners go, well, I know Netscaler can do that. What are those four key areas which um, partners should be leading with Citrix in conversations? So the very first thing that a lot of customers are really worried about is licensing. Uh, they're, they're used to, you put a license on a piece of tin and you go and you bring it out and you make it work, but when you start moving it into the cloud and the whole thing becomes malleable, licensing becomes a lot more challenging. And so this is where we've got some really strong differentiations. So for example, we created a, a licensing model called pooled. With pooled licensing, you're able to disaggregate the software elements from the hardware elements and actually get them to move around and protect the value in the software. The, the next big thing that you'll really want to look at is thinking about what you need to do from a management automation perspective. So as you move to the cloud, what happens is that the hardware disaggregates into a lot of small pieces of software. So suddenly you're going from, say, a pair of Netscalers to having possibly hundreds of virtual machines. The management of those machines becomes really key, and this is another strong differentiation for us. We have a new technology called MASS, Management Analytics System. And what MASS lets you do is not only take care of all of those, but tie it into orchestration systems like Kubernetes, OpenShift, and so on. So a lot of really powerful things on that front. Next thing you need to think about is your team. Uh, and I know this isn't really a product thing, but how do you go and take the most important part of your organization, your team, and say, if you're gonna move from a traditional data center into the cloud, how do I bring the team with me? Because there's obviously skills that have to change, talent has to get revisited, this is, again, one part where there is a benefit in the product in that the fact that we have the same code base that is spanning everything from premise to cloud means that from a one day any strategy, you now have one investment in your team and they can go to any cloud and be able to apply that knowledge. And the last thing, number four, and I promise I'll keep this last, is the analytics piece. Yep. Uh, analytics is obviously the big thing coming around. We're hearing about it all over the place, but the tremendous insights that you can get from having your application broken apart into all of these component pieces and the data you can pull from it is really rich. So there's a lot of performance data you can pull from the whole thing, as well as security data. The anomaly detection when you spot when I see traffic patterns that aren't quite right or users doing things that aren't I'm not expecting, these are the things that allow us to stand out from our competition. So what you're uh, effectively saying, that's really exciting, is actually customers actually now have a very clear security model which isn't scary for their internal team. Mm -hmm. Working with partners to clearly define where are we going to the cloud, 
where are we going to burst out? What workloads are we doing? Are we doing this for DR? Are we doing this for certain projects? There's actually a Netscaler product and a licensing model that can work specifically for them. Absolutely, and, and this is for the whole journey from the customer's perspective. So even if you are you know, still thinking about the world as your own data center, there's still traditional licensing. If you're looking at, I know I'm going to move to the cloud, but I'm not sure when, pool becomes really helpful. It allows you to hedge your bets. If you're going all software, there are new licensing models that we're introducing that allow you to do very software-centric licensing rather than network-centric licensing, which is true for the cloud. And then, of course, eventually there's the full cloud service. You can consume things like Mass as a cloud service and get yourself out of licensing altogether. Yeah, absolutely. So from a, um, uh, a product standpoint, you don't necessarily need to have ZenApp and Zen Desktop to deploy Netscale. It could be a standalone product and as a security product. Maybe tell me a little bit more around um, how as a non-Zen app, Zen desktop product, how can partners look at using Netscaler and deploy that purely for traditional workloads? Uh, absolutely, so the, this is actually, it's interesting because as successful as the combination of Netscaler has been with Zen app and Zen desktop for the workspace, that is actually not the most common way the Netscaler gets deployed. The most common way the Netscaler gets deployed is actually as a load balancer or something that goes and enables a web-based application to scale out and move up into the cloud. The use case there is actually really compelling, really powerful. So now when you start thinking about how does my application handle surges of traffic? How does it handle a distribution of uh, servers that have to get run up in the cloud? These are all the things that the Netscaler can do for you. So security, performance, high availability, disaster recovery, it's all covered in the Netscaler as part of the core package. You don't need to go and get a bunch of individual pieces and glue them together. Yeah. And having visibility of what's actually happening, what's passing through that, and, and if necessary speeds and where people are coming from, that's actually really useful for customers to know what's happening in their network and what the user experience is like. Absolutely, the, the insights that you gain from the analytics is just incredible. Uh, I'll give you an example, and I'll, I'll pick on ZenApp one for, for an instance. Sure. HDX Insight, we've had this now for some time, and it's, uh, it's a little disappointing for me how, how many people are still new to HDX Insight, but we hear about customers where they say, I get an end user that calls up frontline support, they're frustrated because they say their desktop is slow, yep. can't pinpoint why. Now, with HDX Insight, the networking team and the server team look at the exact same report, the exact same data, and they can pinpoint where the problem is without having to go and troubleshoot different places in the data center, the end user, and so forth. Time to resolution drops right. dramatically. Raising a ticket for storage, servers, network, etc. It's just cumbersome. It's not the right way people should be working now. Night, night and day difference. So we can help solve those issues really quickly, mm -hmm. um, particularly for Zen App customers as well. Uh, absolutely. HDX Insights are great for Zen App and Zen Desktop. You can also apply things like Security Insight and SSL Insights that are part of Mass uh, in more traditional web-based applications. So that's really interesting. Tell me a little bit around how we can help with web-based applications. So somebody has um, an application that they're trying to publish out. How do they do that with Netscaler? So we, it's funny that you use the word publish out because we're, we're thinking in terms of desktops. But in the web case, the web application is going to be sitting there. So you're, you've got, say, your Tomcat server or you've got a traditional web server, web-based application. You can even have an old enterprise web-based application like SAP that's still not moved to the cloud. In those circumstances, the Netscaler serves as a proxy in front of those servers. And so by being a proxy, it's able to do really a couple of key things. Number one, it provides a secure layer before the traffic makes it to the server. So now if there's an attack, uh, there's an SSL crypto thing that's going on, the Netscaler goes and bears the brunt of that so your app server doesn't. The next big thing it's going to address is performance. As that traffic comes in, especially as the traffic surges and, and comes back down, those surges in traffic can get offloaded on the Netscaler, especially things like SSL, which is increasingly becoming a, a tough workload. That SSL gets offloaded to the Netscaler and the app server doesn't have to deal with it. In essence, the Netscaler acts as a shock absorber for what's coming in from the internet. And the last piece there is all the insights, so the analytics again, but now we're doing analytics for web-based applications, not just ICA-based applications. So you're able to go and see what your web-based applications are doing, are they performing the way they should, and are your end users getting a desirable experience? Which is a great way for IT to then start being proactive rather than being reactive to the problems exactly. and assuming everything's actually okay. Exactly. So it's a really, really powerful tool from a, um, a user experience perspective, an analytics perspective around 
the metrics that matter to the business, but also from a performance and security posture, Netscaler really does have some really cool tools in there. And also Gartner recognizes us as the only ADC player that actually plays in the four key areas, which customers are looking at and partners should really be considering and understanding more about. Absolutely. So I suppose that leads me into my next question around where should partners who are having conversations with customers, where should they invest their, their time and upskilling around what Netscaler can actually do? What, what would be some of your suggestions there? The, the multi-hybrid cloud is the one that's probably, it's immediately in front of us, right? These are opportunities that we're seeing now, uh, actively in our customers. What I often advise all of the, the Citrix sales team to do is actually start the conversation with mass. So this is, this is a radical change from talking about the biggest, most impressive piece of hardware you have. When you start the conversation with mass, what you're doing is you're bringing into the, the hybrid cloud conversation and you're, you're bringing your customer to talk about what the requirements are in that context. So you're talking about analytics, you're talking about cloud, you're talking about enabling them to make the move to cloud and being supportive of that transition, not somebody who's reacting negatively to it. Yeah, asking the question, how are we actually going to do that and what do we need to consider to reach our desired state? Exactly. What you said is starting with the analytics and how we can understand what's happening actually then starts drawing out the use cases that they may not have considered or understand what's possible. Exactly, and then what ends up happening is that the customer will guide you to the underlying platform that they need, whether it's hardware, software, virtual machines, cloud, they self-select at that point. So I've found in many cases, for example, that we'll go and we'll spend hours talking about the management, the software, and in the end, the customer ends up buying a bunch of hardware because they are not ready to make that move. What they were looking for was that comfort of knowing that an investment in something today is future-proofed as they move into the cloud of tomorrow. Wonderful, and you've highlighted that Citrix is the only vendor that can do that, and the only one that's endorsed by Gartner to make that happen. Absolutely. Well, that's wonderful. Um, look, we can talk for hours around all the different features and, and everything that actually really is um, um, sexy technology or very um, cool that partners should be talking to customers about, but why don't we ask the question now of um, Summit 2019, why should partners consider um, coming to Summit in January next year? Oh, so S Summit is one of my favorite times of the year. And what is so exciting about it is that it's an opportunity where we not only get to talk about what's new in the product. I mean, that's always, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a geek. I love talking about my product. But the product by itself without the use cases and understanding the customer's environment is just, just no good. And yep. so at Summit, we really go out of our way to lay out a sales strategy that not only you can hear about what our teams are doing, but then you can also replicate in your environments. So as you go talk to your customers, Citrix Marketing is aligning with you, you're seeing alignment from your local sales teams. When you involve somebody, they're already on point with what they need to say and what they need to do. And over the course of the year, you'll see all that backing material, the enablement material coming at you, supporting you along that way. So now you're not just hearing about a product update and that's it, and then suddenly finding surprise that, oh, why don't I know about this tool or sales yeah. tool or, or new opportunity that that's, you know, is out there, which is something that if your competition has, they're going to have a leg up on you. So we, we really do encourage all of our partners to come out to Summit. Oh, wonderful. So for those partners who are either a traditional Citrix partner, a Microsoft partner, an AWS partner, or even a, a security pure play partner, Coming out to, um, to Summit in 2019 and understanding that Netscaler and all our other solutions really has a play for you and what you're trying to do for your, your customers and make sure that you have the best relationships with Microsoft, AWS, Google. What Steve's highlighted today is really that Netscaler is a pure play product and a complementary product to traditional Citrix um, strategy workloads. Steve, thanks so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Good Look to forward to seeing you next year. Cheers.